All right, let's talk about that Game of Thrones finale. Apparently, everybody on the face of the planet hates it. And sure, it's not like the best ending ever. It's not the perfect ending everybody was constructing in their heads. But it's not nearly close to bad. You know, it's like it's not even nearly close to that. I feel like people that say this season's bad or there's bad writing, I feel like they're being super hyperbolic. Because if you compare it to every other TV show, at least Game of Thrones gives you an ending, you know? Like, I mean, how many TV shows never get an ending? And how many TV shows fuck up the ending that ruin the TV show entirely? Like, Lost. There's no point to watch that series ever again. I'm gonna rewatch Game of Thrones. I just rewatched uh, Battle of the Bastards the other day. And you know what's amazing about that episode is that in Season 8, during the Bells... They parallel Battle of Bastards a hell of a lot. There's a lot of symmetry going on, you know, with the dragon's music, with the uh, the horse charge. And there's even a line in Battle of Bastards at the beginning of the episode when Tyrion is talking about the Mad King and Danny says she's not her father. And then Tyrion goes, you're talking about destroying cities. It's not entirely different. And, like, I just thought that was amazing. That we get the payoff of that in Season 8. You know, they set that shit up in Battle of Bastards in Season 6. And then two seasons later, we see Danny destroy a city and let loose. So, you know, other than the amazing uh, parallels <laughs> that they have with uh, Battle of Bastards, I don't think you can call this season bad. Or even this last episode bad. Because the cinematography, the soundtrack, the acting, all that far outweighs the bad. And yeah, I get it. Some people think it's rushed. But what else do you expect you were going to get? They only had six episodes to finish this. And I'm happy they rushed it. You know why? Because the first five seasons, it felt like they were going slow as fuck just to get to the point. And in season six, we get right to the point. We get right to where we need to be. There's no time wasted. And I guess that's why it feels rushed, because... They've conditioned the audience to be fine with their time being wasted. Like the whole uh, Rob Stark thing early on in the show where you thought he was going to be like this big hero and then he ends up getting killed at the Red Wedding. That whole like season and two seasons with Rob Stark was fucking pointless because he got killed. So they literally wasted our time that whole time to get us connected to this character just to kill him. You know, everyone's fine with that, right? They're fine with their time being wasted, but when we actually have a season that doesn't waste any time, doesn't drag, gets to the point, people think it's rushed. When really, if they were doing this kind of pace, like every season, we would be much further along the story by now, you know? Like, we wouldn't have to wait around so much. So, you know, I really liked that a lot about the season, how they didn't waste our time. And in the last episode... You know, they don't waste that much time killing Danny because we all know she should die for what she did. And she's going to be an evil tyrant no matter what. So why would they waste our time and drag it out and wait till like the last moments of the show to kill Danny when you could just do it in the first half of the show and get it over with? Because we know it has to happen. And there was a bunch of beautiful shots in the last episode with the dragon behind her when she was walking out about to give her speech, and there's this shot where she's staring at Jon Snow, like, when they uh, take away Tyrion, she's just staring right at him. I thought that was really, like, ominous and really, like, creepy, and I think Jon felt that same way. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I really love how Jon's trying to justify uh, Danny's actions, but he can't. And, you know, when he goes to, and talks to her, he gives her every way out. He gives her so many chances to you know, right the ship, you know, so many chances to see the error of her ways. And she's so deluded and she's so committed to her manifest destiny that she can't see the forest through the trees. You know, she can't see what a monster she is. She thinks she's doing good. And John has this amazing line. And, you know, this is why I don't get why people say there's bad writing, because you get amazing lines like what John says to her. He's like breaking down. He's like about to cry. And he says, what about the, all those other people who think they know what's good? And I thought that line alone was so brilliantly delivered. And the acting was so fucking good that I felt John's pain. 
and it almost made me want to cry because like Danny was the hero for this whole series and she can't see what a tyrant she is even though she's been like this for several seasons she always thinks she's doing good and what does every tyrant in history have in common you know Hitler Stalin Genghis Khan what do they all have in common they all believe that they were right and Danny believes she's right in her actions. And, that, you know, that's why John has to kill her. He sees how it's never going to end. And it's hard for him to kill her because he loves her. And, like, I thought that all that whole scene was just brilliantly done. And I love how the dragon comes in. And the dragon is smart enough to know that the reason Danny has lost her mind a bit and why John felt the need to kill her, it was all because of that fucking Iron Throne. And something I've been wanting to happen, the whole series happens, and the dragon melts the throne down, destroys it. You know, that's what we've wanted to happen. That's the whole problem with this show. Everybody's fighting over this throne, and the throne is a symbol of absolute power and oppression, and you melt it down. That's something I've been wanting to see the whole show, and they did it in this episode. So I think the first half of the series finale was brilliant. You know, I thought it was brilliant. The way we saw Danny in her madness, believing that she was doing good. I thought that was brilliantly done. The acting was top notch. The writing was really good. The reasoning they had when uh, Tyrion was talking to Jon Snow in the cell and Jon's trying to defend Danny and Tyrion say, like, no, man, like, she's fucking bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> I thought all that writing was brilliant. But then you get to the second half of the episode. And this is where I think a lot of people had the problems the most. I don't really see... I mean, if people were really complaining about, you know, Jon Snow killing Daenerys, I don't know what to tell you. Like, obviously that was going to happen. Like, that was this whole setup from the last episode that we just saw. And that is a bittersweet ending, you know? Jon Snow protecting the realm, you know, and killing the tyrant... But the bitter part is that the tyrant he's killing is the person he loves. So it's like, you know, very bittersweet. And then the show uh, continues on the second half when we get Bran Stark getting named the king, which I fucking hated. Uh, <laughs> I hate Bran Stark, though. That's why I hate it, because I don't like the actor. I think he's a shitty actor. I think uh, the character probably should have been written out of the show a long time ago. Because he's just boring as fuck. The actor is not that good. He's not that interesting to, you know, hear or look at. And I, I want Brandon Stark to die so many times in this show. And, you know, he gets named King. And I'm just sitting here like, well, I guess that's it. <laughs> you know, like, no one else could be King, I guess. And when you're looking at that fucking circle, that council meeting they're having, no one else can really be King. You know, like, you're looking at everybody else, you're like, uh, who's going to be king? That fucking weird kid from the Vale? Like, that's going to be the king? You know, so a couple old guys. The fucking uncle who got married at the Red Wedding. Is he going to be the king? Like, no. Like, th like there's nobody else that could have been king in that moment. They set it up so Bran was the only option. So that kind of pissed me off. But mainly, it pissed me off because I fucking hate that fucking character and actor. Like, I just don't like the acting. I don't like watching that character on screen. So that's that's the reason I hate it. It has nothing to do with the writing or the way it was, you know, played out. It made perfect sense when uh, Tyrion starts talking about stories and stuff like that. And then you think back to the first episode of the show, and it ends with Brandon getting paralyzed. And that starts the chain of events that would go on to be the whole series. So... If, thematically it makes perfect sense why Brandon Stark would be the next king why he would take on the throne and stuff because first of all he's sitting the whole time you know that's something kings do a lot they sit in their thrones and Brandon Stark is wheeled around in his throne all the time so I liked that little detail <laughs> but also Brandon was the catalyst for the whole show he's the reason this whole show started he's the reason the whole Game of Thrones started because of the Lannisters don't try to kill Bran then they probably don't turn on Ned Stark you know that a lot of things probably don't happen if Brandon doesn't fall out that window you know 
if he doesn't catch Jamie and Cersei's fucking, a lot of the show's events don't happen. In fact, probably the whole show doesn't happen. So I get why they named him King. It makes perfect sense. I just hate the fucking actor. And it was just, I didn't like it at all. I didn't like, I didn't like uh, seeing that little smirk on his fucking stupid face, you know. But, but I did like how Tyrion was, you know, the hand of the king, you know. Tyrion kind of got a happy ending. And the show had a bunch of happy endings, which I think is another thing that surprised a lot of people because this whole show has been, you know, down endings, nothing good happens this whole show. And in this last season, they defeat the Night King, which is a huge happy ending, right? <laughs> and then uh, in the last episode, all the Starks end up living. At least the last of the Starks live. And they all go their separate ways. Sansa becomes the Queen of the North, which I like that ending. I think that's a perfect role for her. Bran becomes the King of the Six Kingdoms. You know, I don't like the actor, but that's a good conclusion for his character. Arya Stark uh, sails west to see what's west of west. That's a good conclusion to her character because she's not exactly a leader, so she couldn't be a king or queen. But, like, I could totally see her being an adventurer-type person. So, yeah, that makes sense for her character. And then Jon Snow getting banished and sent up north of the Wall, I thought was the bittersweet part of it. Because it's sweet because Jon Snow is the good character that we all don't want to see die. So that's the sweet part. He didn't die. That's the good part. The bad part is he has to go to the wall again, just like the fucking second or first episode, and he's just back there, and that's where he's going to be for the rest of his life, unable to get married or have kids. He's going to be the last of the Targaryens in an icy tundra, you know? So that's kind of like the bitter part. But, you know, I really like how the show ends and you see Jon Snow uh, leading the free folk back into their lands and I assume Jon Snow is going to become the king of the north he's probably going to get a bunch of wildling uh, tales so you know he's not going to have to worry about not having sex for the rest of his life I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure he's going to get plenty but I'm telling you when you compare this ending to like the Sopranos ending where it just cuts to black or the fucking Lost ending, where it never explains what the fuck the monster was. When you compare it to those shows, Game of Thrones is wildly better. I don't even know how you can argue that. Like, the fucking cinematography alone is better than 95% of the movies that have been released this year. The good far outweighs the bad. What's the bad? It's kind of rushed. The characters I didn't like got endings I didn't want them to get. It's just like, what the fuck was the bad? Because things didn't happen the way you want it to happen, then it means it's bad writing. You know, I love how so many people say it's bad writing. <laughs> like, yeah, like like anybody knows how to write it better, right? It's so ridiculous. So that that's your bad, is that people keep saying it's rushed and that the writing was poor. But the good is the cinematography is top notch. The acting is incredible. For what the material they have, it's fucking incredible. The soundtrack is outstanding. This is the best soundtrack they've had from every season. The soundtrack in season 8 is better than every other season of Game of Thrones. The special effects were incredible. Everything looked amazing. And we actually got conclusions, you know? What do I care if they're the conclusions I didn't want? You know, it's, what difference does that make? At least we got conclusions. And there was a lot of points in this show, especially this last episode, where I was on the brink of tears. You know, when Tyrion finds his dead brother and sister, I fucking teared up. I don't care that it didn't make sense that their bodies were, like, perfectly fine, even though they were crushed beneath rubble. That doesn't fucking matter. What matters is the emotion from the scene and seeing Tyrion's reaction. And I teared up again with Jon Snow had to kill Danny. I was actually tearing up when he said that line. What about all the other people that think they know what's good? Like, I teared up when he said that because I realized that John is essentially telling himself, I have to kill Danny. Like, that that was the feeling I was getting, and I was tearing up for that moment. And I thought it was a perfect end for Daenerys. She deserved to die. She died from her lover's hand. 
it's very Shakespearean the way it ended between them. So honestly, the show was good for what it was. The show was never going to meet expectations because people put the show on such a high pedestal. They put the expectations so out of reach that there was no chance it was ever going to reach that. And apparently, George R.R. R. Martin, this is the ending he told the showrunners that he was thinking about doing. You know? <laughs> like, the showrunners ran this by George R.R. R. Martin, and he was fine with it. And another thing that's fucking funny is how people say the showrunners or the writers, they, they can't write good episodes because they don't have any George R.R. R. Martin books to adapt which is funny because they didn't have a fucking book for season six and season six has the best episode of Game of Thrones, which is Battle of the Bastards. It's easily the best episode in the whole series and they didn't have a book to go with it, apparently, because George R. R. Martin takes fucking 20 years to write a fucking book because he's so goddamn lazy. But but, you know, that's beside the point. The point is for the time they had, I think they told the story well enough that it was a good enough ending that they left open. Like, you watch this finale in season eight. Yeah, everybody gets their endings. They all go their separate ways. But it's left open. I could easily see them doing a movie. I don't know why no one's talking about that. Like, this could easily have a movie to end the actual series, you know? And if fucking Deadwood could get a fucking movie on HBO, I, I guarantee... Game of Thrones is going to have a movie that's going to start at the end of this season 8 finale. And we're probably going to see, like, Bran Stark die in the first 10 minutes. And it's going to be, like, a who done it like movie. Like, who killed the king? <laughs> like, that's how the movie's going to start. Who killed Brandon Stark? I think that would be a great way to start a movie that picks up right at the end of this season. I would be shocked as hell if they don't have that in the works right now. Because you... You can't tell me a Game of Thrones movie ain't going to make a billion dollars. That shit's going to be a huge hit. And yeah, the Game of Thrones ending was bittersweet. You know, it was mostly a happy ending, but, you know, it was bitter because we didn't get the endings we wanted. I think that's why it's bitter for a lot of people. They didn't get what they were envisioning in their heads. And that's the problem with it. And they just use, you know, excuses like, oh, it's rushed or it's bad writing. They use those excuses because they can't think of an actual reason why it's bad. And once again, I am so happy they ended the show in this season. I'm so happy they didn't drag it on for two more seasons. That's what everybody wants. They just wanted them to continue this show and waste our time for three more seasons. Until we actually get to the point where Danny turns and John has to kill her. It was going to happen anyway. Like, what the fuck is everybody's problem? I don't like it when shows and movies waste my fucking time when I know what the outcome's going to be. I really like that they rushed the season. Was it a perfect ending? No, it was never going to be. I was never expecting that. Like a lot of you fools out there were. Like for all the people who thought this fucking last season was going to be perfect and they were going to answer everything perfectly in six episodes, you're kidding yourself. I took what they gave us. And what they gave us was excellent TV. That's better than most movies. I can't think of a movie that's come out this year that's better than this season. What they give us, like a grand total of six to eight hours of TV? You know, that felt like one giant movie? Like, that's good for me. You know, like, I don't understand what people's problems were. And people can keep saying bad writing and rushed all day if that helps them sleep at night. But the fact is, like, a. Seven hours to tell a story is not exactly rushed. It took them seven hours to tell the story of season eight. Not exactly rushed. What was rushed was the fucking last act of Avengers Endgame. That's what was, what was fucking rushed. 20 minutes to wrap up this fucking movie that makes no sense. That's what's rushed. Seven hours to tell a fucking story. Not exactly rushed. But anyway, that's it for now. I thought the end of the season was fine. It fit for the story that they were telling. And what more could you really ask for? You know how many shows get horrible endings? You know how many shows don't get any endings at all? You know how fucking hard it is to make a series go on for eight seasons? This shit doesn't happen often. Even Battlestar Galactica had a shitty ending. Comparatively, 
Game of Thrones ending was amazing compared to all those other endings, all right? So, yeah, that's it for now. I thought it was a great idea to end the show on this season because this hate train would have kept going. You know, nobody would have liked this season no matter what. And if they actually did a season 9 and 10, people would have hated those too. And they would have kept hating on them no matter what until the show ended. So I'm glad they ended the show just as the hate bandwagon was starting. Uh, yeah, I think that was brilliant for them to do because there was no way. They were going to satisfy anybody, no matter how many seasons they got. And really, the hate for this show right now, it just gives me Batman versus Superman flashbacks. Like, I don't understand where any of the hate's coming from. No one seemed to complain about, you know, the writing in Season 6 in uh, Battle of Bastards. I just want to mention it again because I just saw the episode again recently because I rewatched it. But in that episode, there's a part where Ramses goes... My dogs are famished. They're going to love eating on your men. They haven't eaten for seven days or something. And Sansa isn't around to hear Ramsay say that. She's already left the conversation. She does not hear Ramsay say that. Yet, at the end of the episode, she says, You haven't fed your dogs in seven days. You said it yourself. Like, how the fuck did she know that? She wasn't there to hear it. So technically, that's bad writing. But no one bothered bringing that up when that show was uh, airing. So it's funny that people want to nitpick it right now that it's ending uh, and there's nothing, you know, the showrunners or anybody on the show could do about it. You know, it's not like they can come back at season nine and make it up because it's the end of the show. So yeah, you're going to go ahead and hate on it as much as you want because there's going to be no recourse. The showrunners aren't going to be able to prove you wrong with the next season because this is it. And all these fucking million people that are signing a petition to redo season eight, why don't they just stop fucking complaining like children and actually make a season eight for themselves? There's a million of you fucks signing a petition. You telling me y'all can't get together and make a show? You know, you can't get together and make your own fucking show? You guys sign a fucking petition? You fucking cowards? Didn't mean to end it on that note, but that's where it's gonna end. I have no agenda here. Okay? If I wanted to get views, I would make a video talking about how much shit the last episode of Game of Thrones was. But that's it for now. Everybody, comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Hit that thumbs up button. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification button. i see you all next week. Okay, bye. When someone says, oh, dude, they got to remake season eight of, of fucking Game of Thrones, and I'm going to sign the petition, you, you say, get out there. That's what you say to them. And they say, what? And you say, well, you're the f you're on the front line, dude. You're not going to be making decisions. People tell you what to do.